welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm Max. I'm Chris. I'm the Good Dinosaur. And this is the Good Dinosaur podcast, where we talk <laughs> about all things the Good Dinosaur and beyond. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to call myself Nomus in the intro, but I completely forgot what it was called. Oh, yeah. Nomus. You heard about Nomus? No. Darcy? Oh, Nomus is coming. He's coming. Who is that? Or what is that? Is that a wolf? Um, Nomus is, um... <laughs> <laughs> just look it up. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll look it up. You just need to know that he's out there and he's coming and he's coming hard and fast and he, he will uh, change the game. Yeah. He'll probably scare the shit out of you. Oh, yeah. It's like a big gnome. Called Nomus. He protects, um, you know, our history and our, our, the, the British legacy of uh, going into other countries and stealing a bunch of shit. I don't think Darcy can find him. It's fine. We don't have to, we don't have to talk too long about Nomus. You just need to know that he's out there. He, he is there. He is coming. And you will know. Oh, that is absolutely horrific. Cool. So, <laughs> it's episode 75. Way! Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, it's been a while. But, mm. I mean, mm-hmm. I say that, but like... No, not really. We did, but, a, we did yeah. a bonus one. But it feels like we've been holding off on this one for forever. Yeah, forever. We, used, we never wanted to finish this. We didn't for want to Forever in a day, we've been holding off on this episode. Mm. Getting closer and closer to 100. Yeah. Yeah, what? Yes, yeah. A hundred episodes like talking days. about High School Musical <laughs> and everything <laughs> High School Musical related. Oh. It's another one that we watched related to that, that movie. <laughs> but before yeah, we, we get into that one, we've been all right, guys? Yeah. Um, yeah. Not much to report, really. Okay. So, yeah. It's been an incredibly so, cu- busy couple of weeks for me, but things yep. are starting to quieten down, which I appreciate. Starting to get into the uh, the seasons, the the good ones, the seasons, the good seasons. Oh, you mean the summer seasons? Sure, summer is one singular season, but yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, actually sunny <laughs> outside. <Come on>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. I had to. <laughs> I looked behind me. I was like, "He's right," you know. No, you could. You could imagine <laughs> just turning around. It's just like pissing down with rain or something. That'd be horrible. Yeah, but that is. I've had enough of it. That is the British summer. Though, I'm sick it? of it now. <laughs> Although yeah, I always complain true. when it's summertime, and I'm like, this is awful. Yeah, it's because it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot, yeah. I'm sweating all the time. I, I, don't, I haven't bought any new clothes since, I don't know, five years ago. It's yeah, just too much. Yeah, everyone is like jumpers. <laughs> well, not quite that yet. It was a little, mm. chi- it was a, br- a bit brisk today when I went out. Yeah, it's a little bit <clears throat> windy. Oh, you said Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> a little Vin Diesel. He's out there also. He's he is out there. He'll be there as well with Nomus. <laughs> He's puppeteering him. That's a pretty terrifying kind of like image. Fast Ten's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, they've called it Fast X. I think. Oh, okay. Or Fast X. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. Makes sense. Can't wait for that one. Uh, Fast and Fury. What the whatever the fuck the ninth one was called. That was great. It's like Fast Nine, wasn't it? Something like that. No, I feel, yeah, I feel like they've just given no, up with, like, the titles. It was, it was just F9. It was um, F9. Yeah. a keyboard key. Yeah, they've given up now, they? Yeah. <laughs> the Rock doesn't want to do it anymore. So what's the point? I think it just should have stopped a long time ago. Anyway, we're not here to talk about F9 or FX or whatever. Whatever. The, whatever uh, keyboard keys they want to name their next movies after. We saw a movie. We did. About Nick Cage, starring Nick Cage about Nick Cage. And it's called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And it was directed by Tom Gormican. It's a passion project because he loves Nick Cage and um, so did the other guy who, who wrote it. I forgot his name. So sorry. Um, <laughs> I can't be bothered to look it up. Um, it's about Nick Cage. Nick Cage is in it and he, I've said that a million times now it feels. It and it. Um, it's, like a, it's like a movie movie. It's like a blockbuster one where they're like, we're going to make a movie it's about Nick Cage. He's a he's an actor. He's down on his luck a bit, and he needs some money. And then um, he meets Pedro Pascal, and they form a bromance together. It's very. But cute it also romance. he gets hired by the CIA because Pedro Pascal is up to some shit, and he's to get to the bottom of it. And he's Nick Cage. And if Nicholas you didn't know, Cage Nick is Cage Nick is... Cage. That's that's <laughs> like the tagline on the yeah. on the poster. Nicholas Cage is Nick Cage. Like, wow. I had no idea what this movie was about. 
I only went because Nick Cage was in it. Yeah, we thoughts? didn't want to be told. Um, Initial thoughts? Well, I didn't know anything about the film going in, so I didn't know what to expect, and I still wasn't expecting what I saw. I don't know. <laughs> it was good, though. Um, I just don't really know what to say about it, because like, what what happened? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't know what to expect. You almost get floored by what you do see. It's a hell of a lot of fun, I think. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I laugh for ages. Really, <laughs> really funny. It's like probably the funniest script I've seen like from a film like I've like this year at least. I mean, it's the most like stupid kind of idea, and I think it's really funny. Like it kind of goes it, with it. Yeah, it's very self-aware. Yeah. that it's like a ridiculous concept. Because we were talking about it briefly um, before we left, and Chris was saying. It could either be the most pretentious thing ever, or it could be the funniest thing ever. And luckily, it was really funny and not like I don't know, preachy about like, oh, I'm Nick Cage, mm-hmm. I'm so great, I'm Nick Cage. I mean, there is a bit of that in there, but it's kind of funny more than it's like, like poking up your fun own at ass. Yeah, like, <laughs> like not really poking fun at him, but like he has a laugh the, the himself, Hollywood though, system yeah. and like action and um, all the, all these kinds of things. Um, with all like the chemistry between Cage and Pascal was like. It was so good. They like yeah. really gel really very well together. Um, and this is, I mean, it's like going for like a meta angle. It's very meta. It, it kind of reminded me of adaptation in that way, where Nick Cage plays two people who are twins in that movie. And it's sort of about making movies. And this is kind of about making movies as well, because mm. they're trying to make a movie. Like Pedro Pascal's like, I want to make a movie with you, Nick Cage. I love you so much, Nick Cage. <laughs> and Nick Cage is like, you're all right, bro. I'll make a movie with you. And then, like the entire time, they're like trying to devise this movie that they're making. It's like, and this this should happen also, but it's like happening within the movie that you're watching. So it's kind of like, yeah, the movie kind of explains this movie through being in the movie. <laughs> There's a scene, like yeah. a drug scene where they trip out on acid. And they go, fuck. This may just be the drugs talking, but uh, I think there should be a drug scene in this movie. And yeah. it's like, yeah, you're just watching. The movie that they're making, essentially. Yeah. They get, like, really paranoid because there's these two people and they think they're staring at them. Yeah. And they crash a car. Yeah, all that, all that was, like... <laughs> crash a car. Done. Yeah. It was, like, here's, like, a trailer. This would be, like, a real trailer moment, wouldn't it? When they're, like, trying to climb over the wall or something. Or, like... Oh, yeah. The, or, like, when well, they were shooting. Trying to run away or something, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't see the trailer, but I assume these things were in the trailer. Uh... I well, Probably. whenever I saw, yeah, yeah, whenever I saw a trailer, it was just like two seconds of Nick Cage screaming in a car, and that was about it. Yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck is this film even supposed to be?" But I think they did that on purpose. I feel like they made it as vague as possible, so people would go, "Nick Cage is Nick Cage in a movie about Nick Cage." I don't understand. That's and enough then they to go sell the movie. Yeah, now, I, I, I would say so. That's basically all I knew about the movie. I yeah. heard it was like an action sort of movie, and I knew that Nick Cage was in it playing himself. Mm-hmm. That was kind of what sold me on it. Uh, I think um, when uh, there's a what was that video that we watched where Nick Cage was talking about his roles and he went this was the hardest one to do because I had to play myself <laughs> and I was like it doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense does yeah. it? <laughs> well, I think he turned it down for for a yeah, bit. Yeah, he did. And then at one point like he was like, I feel like it'd be great if I played Pedro Pascal's character. He was like that would be like the most meta thing ever. But then oh, what, like he plays he was... both people? No, he just plays the Pedro Pascal character. Oh, and then someone else Nick plays Nick Cage. Yeah, he thought that would be a good idea. And then I think eventually he was one round being in the film. Mm-hmm. I thought it would have been quite fun to watch someone else try to be Nick Cage, but I feel like only Nick Cage I don't think can it do that. Worked. No, no. I, he's. I was talking about this last night. I think he's genius because yeah. he, he knows who he is and That's he knows how to sell debate, himself. Isn't yeah. It? Is Nick Cage good or bad? Yeah, I was talking about that episode of Community where Abed mm. like has like a huge like graph on his whiteboard. Yeah, like a breakdown. Work, yeah, <laughs> trying to figure out whether Nick Cage is a good or bad actor. I just think he's a genius. He's I a really do. great actor. Yeah, I think he's great. I really love Nick Cage. <laughs> he's been in a lot of like really great movies recently. He's kind of like having a comeback of sorts. Um, yeah, the Rick Cage songs. The Crick Cage song. So, is that what it's actually dubbed as? It doesn't no, roll off the tongue. I'll oh, tell you, you that. You've, you've just uh, named yeah. it now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's 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 Chris has dubbed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it was. Yeah. It, it's not easy to say. It's the <laughs> worst combination of words you could possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, though. There was some effort that went into that. Yeah, I know. For a long time, like in his personal <laughs> life, he had a lot, a lot of debts, and he was like acting in pretty much anything to pay him off. But I think now he's literally just 
acting in stuff that he likes. His mm-hmm. He's doing a lot mad. of like really small movies, like Mandy, which wasn't like a huge movie. He's been in quite a lot of like smaller horror movies, like that um, Willy's oh. Wonderland film. Oh yeah, yeah. And there was the another one, one where um, he was like a there was like a mum and a dad, and they had to like kill their kids or something. Mum and dad. Is that what it's called? I think so. Oh, okay. So you you, you, you know the dad. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it, so I was just. Yeah, I'm thinking like just like <laughs> the entire time I was watching this, I was like, I need to watch more Nick Cage movies. <laughs> I wanted to watch He's, Vampire's um... Kiss for the longest time. But yeah, I still haven't watched. Where that. does it exist? Like I've never seen you know, it anywhere. Like nowhere. Yeah. I think this was like the hundredth leading role that Nick Cage has had, which oh, is quite, quite fitting. Yeah, I like that actually. Uh, that's a cool. Um little gem i think the beauty of this movie is it's clearly made by people who actually have a lot of respect and love for him mm-hmm. like i feel like if it was made by someone who's just doing it because oh nick cage is a meme and they were just like trying yeah. to make it like more silly because of like, how ridiculous it is it wouldn't have worked i'll be honest but it does feel very sincere like yeah it's very silly as you'd expect it to be but mm. it feels like it's made with a lot of love at the same time i just feel like it couldn't be made for anyone other than nick cage i yeah. feel like this film wouldn't work if you had anyone else like you yeah. know um not not anyone else playing it but like if this movie was about anybody else yeah mm-hmm. that's the interesting thing i think about it is that you probably could just put any actor in there and make the film about them but it's the fact that it's about nick cage that makes it work so much because he's such an eccentric personality mm-hmm. i watched um last night we got home and um i watched the infamous interview that he did with terry wogan uh i don't know if you guys have seen this interview no no it's fucking weird <laughs> he's it's like i think he's like 26 years old he goes on the terry wogan show and um, he's wearing his Wild at Heart t-shirt that he's wearing in uh, this movie. As <laughs> yeah. He's got like an alter ego that he kind of battles with. That was quite interesting. I yeah, it's like a younger version of himself. Yeah, he's like always screaming at him. Um, <laughs> he, and I think that was like a definite nod to this interview mm. where like he's insane. He goes yeah. insane. And he like, he walks on. He's like a bad boy. He's got a leather jacket on. Um, and he like, he's, he's like... Terry, oh man, I'm so glad to be here, man. Oh, you, you wouldn't. Oh, it's so hard in here, Terry. And, it's, and he takes his Wild at Heart T-shirt off, and he's like, "Here, Terry, I want you to have this Wild at Heart T-shirt." So he's just like sitting there, um, well, like half naked, from, like, yeah, yeah, half naked, but like a, a leather jacket on. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. He was like talking about uh, his life and how he started off. Um, it, it was insane, honestly. I would really. It's kind of like cringy. <laughs> I really loved it. I was like, yeah. "Fuck it, girl, what is happening here?" Um, it's an interesting interview. I would definitely it's like six minutes long on YouTube. I think um, that's the one I checked out. But that was an. I mean, it's interesting to see how far he's come. Yeah, like how many movies must he have been in to be on the Terry Wogan show at twenty six? I assume he hasn't been in many things before that. Well, he was working since he was sixteen. I think oh, okay. so. He'd been in the biz for about ten years at that point. Yeah. Um, he's just like a. I don't know if I see him so much as like a a star kind of star he's just like mm. a worker he just like they, they even reference it in movies like yeah it's ne- never a point where he's just like not working and that comes at a detriment to like uh, his family life and he's mm-hmm. not really there for his family a lot but i respect the guy a lot honestly yeah it takes a lot to hustle that much especially when i don't know it's, it's quite a demanding job to do i assume yeah i'm sure yeah I mean, he, I, I, as I say, he has kind of made a comeback like more recently. Um, I don't think you guys have seen Pig yet. Oh, I no. think as a performance, you, you watch that movie and you're like, he's still got it. He's, he's insane. He's a fucking insane actor. Because um, he just like, I think there are roles that like only he can do, that only he can embody because he is such mm. an eccentric person. Um and again, with like this movie as well, I don't think you could have made it about anybody else, really. No. Because he is that type of person. Yeah. yeah. And I think he, like, he is fantastic in this movie. Mm-hmm. He really just goes for it. He does all the, like, really eccentric, over the top, like, screaming stuff you'd expect from <laughs> Nick Cage. But then there's also the other side of it where he actually really nails the most, like, quiet, emotional side. Like, there's a lot of the like first 20 30 minutes of the movie is kind of like him in a very low point in his life kind of 
deciding he doesn't want to be an actor anymore, deciding that he's like just kind of lost everything and he's kind of giving up. And I think he does that really, really well. There's also like a bit right at the end where he has this like moment with his daughter and just like the look on his face where he's like so filled with joy and emotion. That was like a really, really fantastic acting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I love him. And I think um, Pedro Pascal was also like a standout performance. I yeah. think they he's work quite... very well together. He's also really cute, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I was saying <laughs> that like... He's like so adorable. You do you like it's kind of like he's trying to infiltrate him, but like they're such good friends that like yeah, like they don't want to. I mean, do spoilers it either, for this yeah. movie, but like there's like a kind of shootout, and like you, you see them both like have guns, and they really don't want to kill each other because they're <laughs> such good friends. It's like now. A point Break sort of situation. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Point Break. Um, but I mean, in this, I guess it's um just like really great acting on like everyone's behalf. Um. Uh, behalf, I guess, Sharon Ho- uh, Horgan is in this as well, who I really love as an actor. Um, she was in This Way Up, uh, the TV show. I think... Is she the I'm, wife? I always like seeing her. Yeah, she's the wife. She's the Irish wife. I really like seeing her in, in films and shows as well. Yeah, she was really good in it. Neil Patrick Harris plays as Asian as well. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. an interesting uh, thing to see. A lot of famous faces in this. I think there was yeah. Quite- they tried to cast Angelina Jolie, but like was, couldn't do it because of COVID or something. Just like a lot of people had to, like a lot of change ups. Mm. I think yeah. that's why the movie was delayed a bit. Demi Moore has a cameo right at the end. <laughs> it was a strange kind of um, flip at the end, where like you think something's going to happen, but like then it changes to like the movie that they've made. Yeah, so it's so like, it, like a, yeah, you're the watching the act. end of the movie. So it's like he's mm. going to kill him, but then it changes like the actors so that they're watching the movie. I was like, that's probably the best way you could have done that, to be honest. Nobody wanted to see, like, oh, and they resolved it all and they were fine and Nick Cage is Yeah, great. yeah, I thought it was... At first, I thought I didn't know what I was... I thought, oh, okay, these girls look different. And then it kind of took me a couple of seconds to clock on to what was actually happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to do it. It's very I meta, it, yeah. you know. I kind of pre- yeah, I kind of preferred that to see in the end of a story that didn't really need to be because it yeah because if it's about a movie you're gonna want to see the end of the movie right not the end of the story within the movie mm-hmm. yeah it's it, it's quite hard to explain when uh <laughs> you're trying to explain the story of a story that's in a movie of a movie within a movie yeah there's a lot of action <laughs> sequences in the movie as well which i thought were quite fun they're quite well directed mm-hmm. nothing like incredible or groundbreaking it just kind of it fits what they're going for, like this very comedic mm, action sort of tone. But I did get a bit bored yeah. of that, to be honest. But then I'm I'm not an action film kind of person, so I was like gravitating towards like the first like two thirds of it, and then like towards the last third, I was like, oh, here we go, just people yeah. slamming at each other, blah blah it is blah. Kind of like taking the piss out of that, and like unnecessary yeah. action scenes of movies, but at the same time, it's it's slightly towing the line. It's like yeah, but you are doing it. It's like Deadpool, but yeah. like yeah. It, it's kind of what Deadpool wants to be. This kind of self-aware take. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they pulled it off pretty well, though. I mean, if I had like a a problem with the movie, I would say like just the base plot is very samey, and I've seen it before, like a mm-hmm. lot. So it doesn't really. I don't think it does so much with it to like elevate itself. But I mean, it is quite a heightened movie. It's quite yeah. elevated in that way. So that might even be intentional. If they're mm-hmm. going for like this very satirical sort of Hollywood take. Yeah, I couldn't imagine if they'd thought about it that hard, then they must have done that on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't really care like if the girl died either. Like, No, neither did I. <laughs> he was like roped into this and like the CIA were like, imagine if this was your daughter who was kidnapped. Wouldn't you, then you'd know Nick Cage, wouldn't you? And it, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's not my daughter though. <laughs> See ya. Well, he's Nick Cage. He's just an actor. Yeah. Like he's, what do what, who really is going to risk his life for this? I don't, Apparently I don't so, think yeah. so. And who the hell would show their teenage daughter the cabinet of Dr. Caligari? <laughs> There's like this whole point of like, he's a very self-centered person and he shows his daughter like a bunch of old movies and shit like that. He's like, he, she didn't even appreciate the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. It's like, yeah, it's a hundred years old. Like, I don't know. I, I could actually imagine that being something he does. Mm. Well, Maybe. imagine something that you do. <laughs> nah, I've never seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> is it a really long film as well? Did you say it was long? It's just like a, a, 
it was really just really old. old. It's like yeah. 100 years old. It's a German expressionist movie. Um, it's it's quite silent. interesting, technically. Um, but um, I wouldn't like show it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I <couldn't... laughs> That's fine. This is like if you're into like film history, I guess that's what you'd watch. There are better movies to watch than that, though. I don't know. But I guess it was kind of poking fun at that. Or like film bros, I guess. Not seeing uh, Dr. Caligari, bro. Like, you even like a film guy? Or... Yeah, do you even like movies? <laughs> what do you mean you like Paddington 2? There's so many movies mm. out there in the world. Yeah, it seemed like, like the they Paddington were definitely too, yeah. going for kind of like that film Twitter, like letterbox sort of crowd. Mm -hmm. Like the references to Paddington 2. Where... Was that an attack on us? No. Well. <laughs> so I think that's what they're going for. <laughs> Okay. They know the audience of who's going to watch yeah. this. It's most likely going to be those sort of people. And there weren't a lot of people in the theatre when we went. There was ten. But I counted everyone at was one point. It. Everyone yeah. was like laughing loads. But it's a very funny movie. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if like you get... I kind of felt like it might date a bit. Like if you watch this in ten years, I don't know. Because there were a lot of references to like modern media. I guess it, yeah, I I guess know, it like, also depends on... How those would hold up. Yeah, like, yeah, like how fast technology goes and you know what i mean like um i think it would just depend but is that something for time to answer yeah we probably can watch depends it again. on how his career goes as well should we re-review this in like 10 years time no <laughs> we won't we won't be here but <laughs> we've been doing this in 10 years yeah because <laughs> elon musk will have killed us all yeah yeah with his 43 billion yeah mm. soon he'll buy the podcast oh <gasps> Yeah, but if he buys a podcast, we'll just start up a new one. It'll be fine. We'll be billionaires with a podcast. I will never sell my soul to that guy. This is um, doing this for the love of it and not for Elon Musk's cash. If you want to chuck us some money, I don't mean... You, if you want to sponsor us, us you know? um, we'll talk about the Tesla. <laughs> Ratings? Yeah, sure. Can I write it out of Nick Cage's? Nick Cage's? That's the only thing you can do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a really great time with this. There was like never a moment where I was bored. I think it's paced incredibly well. Really, really funny. Great performances as well. Just all around a lot of fun. I give it eight Nick Cages out of ten. Mm -hmm. I needed the toilet the entire time. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, fucking hell. How long is this fucking movie going on? <laughs> oh, but uh, it's a testament to the movie that I couldn't just walk out and go to the toilet. Um, it really stayed throughout it all. And then wet myself. I don't know why you don't just go to the toilet before it starts. I didn't need the toilet before it started, Darcy. Oh, it's like a touch of childish thing. Yeah. Saying it. But you just go like, yeah, on break. I didn't need to go on break. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, me and Chris actually said this on the way up. I went, oh, I'm going to look because I just wee like a, a, like a seahorse or something. And I was like, Chris, you're going to go. And he goes, oh, I don't really need to, but I think I'm going to, so I don't have to go in the mm -hmm. film. That's the more adult decision yeah. to make. I did not make that, and then I downed an energy drink <laughs> at 6pm, and uh, <laughs> just there, just shaking, like, gripping the seat, like, <laughs> been, how long is this third act, man? Um, good movie, really good movie, really funny. Um, I would love to watch it again. And, yeah, Nick Cage, man. What a guy. I love him so much. I hope okay. he comes up on the marathon list at some point. Yeah. I Did almost you feel this like week could be a magical week for him to turn we up? We should though. have like three Nick Cage marathons or something on that list. <laughs> He's just been in so much. Um, yeah, that's true, actually. Eight Nick Cages out of ten. Uh, is, I, guess it, I guess it's hard to explain um, <laughs> how this movie kind of is. Um I just, do you know what? I'm just going to recommend it to everyone and give it um, eight Nick Cages out of ten. Yeah. It's it's just a hard movie to describe, so I'm not even going to try. Should have done it out of um, when Nick Cage's alter ego is in his mind. He just screams, Nick, Nick fucking Cage. But it goes on for like three minutes yeah. longer than that. How did he hold that <laughs> note for so long? It's just, no, yeah. it's great. Yeah. It's insane. And that's how the movie ends as well. It's just him screaming, Nick fucking Cage. <laughs> Perfect way for it to end. That was great. Yeah. Like I said, only Nick Cage could do that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> wow, that was well, a guys, sigh, wasn't um, it? We we're on to something else we're now, aren't we? Yeah. The start of something new. <laughs> it's the show, <laughs> season one of uh, High School Musical, the musical, the series. This is going to be the longest episode title ever. Oh, it is as well. 
The you really long titles. I think, Why do we do this to no, ourselves? I think, I think you should uh, just abbreviate High School Musical and then do the colon to the musical, the series. HSMTMTS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll know. They'll know what it is. Everyone knows what High School Musical is, but you might have to do the rest. Yeah, this is a Disney <laughs> show. It's on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's it like is. one of the launch shows for mm. Disney Plus. Yeah, so it's about... <laughs> <laughs> The school of East High, if you've ever watched High School Musical, which I assure you we have, um, and we're all brilliant, great fans of it, yeah. um, a really great movie. This mm-hmm. movie takes place, no, this show even, sorry, it takes place at the school that High School Musical was filmed at, East High, yeah. um, which I believe is a real school. It is. And the students there want to put on a show, a play of sorts. Uh, of the High School Musical movie. Everybody loves High School Musical there. They're like, man, High School Musical was filmed at the school. Let's make a High School Musical play. And it's about them making the play. Uh, falling in love, falling out of love. What does it mean to be a, a stage person? What does it mean to um, love the music and have the passion? Uh, great show? Or not awesome? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, okay, I'm just gonna sum it up in a word. Inoffensive. This show is um is not good. <laughs> it's yeah, but you, they expected that, right? Yeah. Like, no, no, I don't think anyone listening was gonna go. Oh, I hope they think it was the best show ever. Did anyone yeah. really? We're think really it was like the having like a. Sorry to <laughs> not even like try to defy expectations. Yeah, I here. know. It's not very good. Um. <laughs> I was having a really bad time. We watched the first five episodes uh, alone. Well, I watched it alone. You guys watched it together without me. And then the <laughs> the, the last five we watched, as we're speaking, yesterday. Yeah. Um, I was having a miserable time with it. And I thought it was very boring, very bland, exactly what part- you'd expect it to be. Yeah. But in the fifth episode, I thought I was just trying. I was like, come on, please, just give me something. Something here. And I think the fifth episode was where it kind of like started to go up for me and I was like okay I can latch on to this whatever is happening here I can go on to this and then I kind of started enjoying it in a sort of horrendous uh, 2001-esque you, through the tunnel way you called, was, it, you oh, called it Stockholm so Syndrome I kind of got Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome from the whole thing I started actually enjoying it um, I was invested, I won't lie, but I wasn't like enjoying what I was watching. Does that make sense? Like, you know when you just want to know how it ends? No. No, okay, I did. I wanted to know how it ended, but I, I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't want to know how it ended, it. I kind of knew what was going to happen. Yeah, I think everyone can kind of guess from the first episode how the show is going to end. They put uh, on the show. Well, I knew they were going to put on the show, but... The yeah. two people get together. Who? The, um, the two? Sort of. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, they do. Because there's this love triangle going on. Um, mm. If you're fond of love triangles... Technically, there's two love triangles there's going on. There's five love yeah, triangles is, yeah. going on. <laughs> it's a... Uh, look, it's nothing we've never seen before. Guy likes a girl, and um, like another guy is there also. Who's she going to pick? Who cares? Is it, uh, who cares? I, I would rather it have not been in there. Yeah, there's and no then, point to it. Then she picks no. neither of them, and then the guy ends up in a love triangle with someone else. So there's like a who's he gonna pick? Yeah, so, so they literally just flip it like halfway through the show. Maybe they were like, "Oh, we have to spice it up a little bit. We're gonna flip just it around the other it way again, now." But the other way around. <laughs> they decided afterwards they were like, "Hmm, mm. never mind." Actually, <laughs> I don't know. It's very, it's very predictable, but parts of it were like, I don't know about you guys, but some parts of it were so cringy that it was funny. So cringy that it was not cringy at all, and that it was actually great. Well, uh, well, every everything I think about now just goes back to that bit where, the, where EJ's checking his Instagram and he's lost six hundred and seventy five yeah, followers, he, and he's just like solemn. So he has like this this Instagram <laughs> like page where he's like. I'm going to apologise like, and confess all the bad things I've done. <laughs> and he's like, it, there's like a brief shot where he has like a video called like EJ's racial insensities or s- something really silly like that. What? It's something like really said? weird like that. He, I'm pretty sure I saw the word racial. Oh, wow. Huh. And then like someone commented and it said, bro, you're cancelled. Then the next shot is like him with like losing 600 followers and him crying. 
Yeah. That was weird. It was funny. <laughs> Why was he an influencer on Instagram? What did he do? Yeah, he it's talked. never explained. Like, ever. Like, and then they, they the... never bring it up again after that, either. No. No. I don't need to resolve it. They they don't resolve anything in, in this season, I don't feel. No. It's like, it ends very abruptly, and it's like, <laughs> season feel, two, bruv. Yeah, I feel like they knew they were going to have a season two, so they were just like, oh, we'll just keep it going so that people so who watch this, time, will, yeah. You'll see all... The new cast of characters that you love so much now is an they're really like is a new cast and you're gonna love them so much. This is gonna be like the new generation, and it's it's very much for a new generation. I feel mm. of like I mean all these actors they kind of um I won't say that they I don't know did they like grow up with it or like they watched well, it at like a super young well, age. Yeah, I rem- suppose. remember at the special? So, yes, we watched the special as well. Oh, um, we did. There was yeah, there was clips of them when they were like five or six or like slightly older, depending on how old the actors are. Um, where they were like, Oh yeah, I went to the premiere or I met one of the Disney stars mm-hmm. on this show, blah blah blah. So a lot of them already kind of like either liked the show the, the show movie? the movie, pardon me. Or knew someone from the movie. So it was just oh, I don't know. I feel like I don't know, I feel like they're I guess they're the right kind of age because I mean, we were a bit older when it came out, but the, the, some <laughs> some of these um, actors were like five years old when it came out, and they were like yeah. in the crowd, like just at these like shows. Uh, yeah, and stuff. I don't know. It's I was like nine. I don't yeah, know. yeah. When so. it came out, like two thousand five, uh, something like that. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it was about nine. It was very much like the movie for my generation. I think. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize that people from, I guess you could say, the generation below, because they're it's slightly kind of like younger. It's kind of like a Gen Z yeah. show now. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it has very Gen Z TikTok yeah, vibes. Yeah, especially with um, so the uh teacher she's supposed to be older. I assume she's meant to be our age, right? Because she's the one who's like, oh yeah, well, I watched it as a teenager and all this kind of stuff, right? So I guess slightly it's older, like Thursday, right? Yeah, her Thursdays, thirties, and she's in her thirties, and she goes about uh starting up this musical um play from the musical ever, and then well, she went, I'm triggered as a millennial, which is obviously like our sort of triggered like as a what. Millennial. A what? Millennial. 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 As a millennial. Millennial. What am I saying? It? I'm just saying it wrong, aren't I? Have you just always said that word wrong? Millennial. Millennial. Can you say it again? Mammalian. Millennial. Millennial. Yeah. Because it's at the turn of the millennium. But I can't speak. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah, she says that, and then it pans over to Ricky, like, Malvin, the same word, and I am triggered as someone who is only 26 years old, because I feel like they made me feel really old in that moment, and I'm also really stupid because I can't pronounce words. I didn't feel like a millennial at all. (laughs) I was so offended. (laughs) I mean, as far as characters go, I thought she was the best one. I thought she did a pretty decent job. Yeah. I'm trying to give credit where credit's due. But Kay R- Reinders, I think was her name. Yeah. She that's was her decent. Name. She was all right. I quite liked her. She was quite. There was like a moment where like I, I was kind of sold on her character where like Nini, who's played by Olivia Rodrigo, and then her friend Courtney, um, they're like in the bathroom and then they're like, we should go on a girls' night out. <laughs> yeah. And then like she comes out of like a toilet cubicle and she just goes, I'm in. And it's like, what the fuck yeah, just like, happened? In, in no other what, what, situation where, would that she was be alright. Yeah, like, it just doesn't... She was just hiding in the toilet cube? <laughs> that was fucking insane. What the fuck? Yeah, was she just... Yeah, was she there to, like... Like, was she there genuinely for, like, toilet purposes? Or was she just, like, waiting for them to go... God, yeah, I we're hope gonna a couple of girls come into the <laughs> toilet and make plans so I can join in on their plan. And then run out and be like, yes, this is the time. <laughs> it's like a whole kind of controversy <laughs> that, like, Miss Jen... She was in the High School Musical movie, and that's why she's the director of the um the High School Musical play that they're doing in the school. When it turns out that like she was, I forget what she was a like, non-speaking uh, part. Yeah, she was a non-speaking part. She was cut out of the movie. Um, and then everyone's like, "This is the, the ultimate betrayal." I can't believe it, but it's like <laughs> she's still she's still like a capable director though. She what? still was able to like do this show with them yeah, and I feel like, like, lead what... them decently. You know, they all knew what they were doing. Yeah, like what makes this worse if for me is that you guys saw the bloody movie. 
So if you had noticed her, why didn't anyone go, oh yeah, I remember you in the movie? Or like, or... Um, well, that's not true. Or like, no, but... But you, you remember were... all the extras from that movie. No, but if you didn't have a no- if you had a non-speaking part, you wouldn't notice her in the movie, would you? Because she's not fucking there. So who went? Oh, so when were you in the movie then? Because I don't see you in the movie. Like, just, just no one pay attention to the fact that no one ever noticed her in the movie, or just no one heard I guess, her speaking. I guess that's like, like you know, for yeah. the for the teachers to decide, like, or like whoever's hiring her. You'd be like, yeah, I was in High School Musical, and they're just like, all right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you weren't there. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you were. To be fair, it's not a massive betrayal though. I don't know why they acted like it was such a. No. Big, horrible shark. Oh, no. She wasn't in the movie after all. Even though we've been doing so well so far. <laughs> that scene was sense. cut. That scene with the apple. They cut that scene with the apple. Is that the last apple? And then, like, they do it at the end. They're like, here's your, here's your scene that was cut out. I love that, was, that um, bit. Oh, I'm skipping a bit, but it's like, at the end, when they do the show, <laughs> they come out with the, all these apples because, like, she had a... On a tray? A scene mm-hmm. that was cut out of the movie... Where, like, she said, is that the last apple? And then they all bring out apples for her. And then they all shout, is that the last apple? And the audience fucking cheers. They're like, yes! <laughs> yes! The <laughs> apple! And the only problem, like, yeah. How did you they didn't know? know what that was, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, you had no frame of reference for that. Why did, why did the audience cheer for that? Yeah, maybe, well, they, yeah, they were they just in the, like, the zone because everyone else was going, yeah, she yeah. finally did, everyone was like, the apple! <laughs> it had, like, yeah, it had no context to it either because it came out of nowhere just at the end. She goes, is that the last apple? <laughs> the audience like, are what? going crazy for the musical as well. Like, they're laughing at every line. It's as mm-hmm. if, like, Disney were like, oh, we really have to, like, pat ourselves on the back for making that great movie. They did that a lot in this show, though. Yeah. yeah. They oh, did that I... a lot with, you know, High School Musical. Yeah. And also just, like, a few other Disney properties yeah, that like... they made. Yeah, like, when mm. she goes, uh, so the uh, teacher invites this other teacher to go and watch a movie, and she goes, I downloaded Big Hero 6. And it's like, oh, we couldn't have any other movie from a different entity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's Disney. I guess I Big Hero know. 6 does kind of make sense, though, because he's meant to be a massive robot nerd, so I guess it... Does make sense, but what about um? What robots? about I Robot? Yeah. What just... about that, huh? Mm. Mm. Could have just watched I Robot. I don't know. And yeah. Like, I think a lot of the cringe comes from like the, the, the kind of language they're using, that's very prevalent nowadays with like social media culture and like how you see the kids talking today i feel so old when i say that but i genuinely think the language and the way that we communicate has changed over it's like at least since i was a child like i communicated through you know cringe but yeah yeah, yeah. in in a different way it is still cringe i'm not above cringe and i liked when this show was cringe that's where i got my entertainment from yeah i'm not gonna lie that's what it came from but yeah who hasn't been the center of making their own sort of cringe because we've all been young before but um i say Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm not saying that we're old but you know i mean like you know when you're a teenager and you're oh yeah you just Mm -hmm. you have your awkward years let's just put it that way and this ah just a lot of this show i don't know whether it was to the characters themselves that made me uncomfortable or whether it was just like the writing like it felt to me like older people like slightly older than us right are writing gen z Mm -hmm. um script for a language they don't understand so yeah, that it was awful because i felt that rather than the characters doing it i wanted more of it man i wanted all these I characters bet you did, you to little be, nut. i wanted them to be cringe i yeah. wanted this show to be entirely cringe it was the for- source of entertainment because kids really. are cringe these teenagers teenagers are. are cringe they are you want some cringe but they're all awesome and you know that they're all great and they have perfect skin and they're all beautiful and it's like You've seen kids. Yeah, they're ugly. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fucking ugly fuckers out there. <laughs> no, but like, come on. Like, they're all like, no, like, so yeah, pristine. You... They've got caked in makeup. But it's like, you not know what teenagers are? Yeah, like, they're sort of like puberty. And, you know, I mean, it's not the real, it doesn't feel like the real deal. But then. Make it, it more uh, like The Office, but yeah. with kids. <laughs> I just, um, well, speaking because... of The Office, do you want to talk about those beautiful camera angles, Max? Cause, I want uh... to talk about the fact that this show is kind of a. <laughs> A mockumentary type thing but it's i mean it's filmed like a documentary they've got a few interviews sprinkled here and here and there with the characters quite a lot actually 
the characters really. are like, oh, I can't believe that EJ just did that to Nini, and like, oh, I right, can't right, believe right. that uh, I'm, I'm uh, this is insane, guys. Can you believe that just happened? But why did it need to be a mockumentary? I don't think it, like, it needed to be. I felt like it was, um, did that, um, I know we were talking about it being a bit like Glee, but did that ever happen in Glee? No. No, I don't know why they didn't just keep that bit out of it, because it just seemed irrelevant. Like, they had, like, random, like, takeaways to um, students, like, oh, I was Lady Suttington at the medieval battle, and then just, like, cut mm-hmm. to her, like, in a un- uh, uniform? Yeah. <laughs> like a The fact that it like is, dress, like, sh- framed as a documentary... It was just bizarre. It, it makes the show worse, because you're always calling into question, like things that probably shouldn't or couldn't have happened if they were actually filming a documentary. Yeah, like things that yeah. shouldn't have been filmed. They, they're like, there's a scene at the beginning where Nini and the other guy, Ricky, break up and they show it. But if we're watching a documentary, how did they get footage of yeah, them like, breaking yeah, up yeah, before I mean. they even decided to shoot this documentary? And why are they following these kids who haven't even auditioned for the musical yet? Yeah, what was yeah, what was the purpose Did of it? They just like film random kids in the hope that they would like get start. The main part. Yeah. Why are they in their homes? <laughs> <laughs> it's why, a bit weird, isn't it? Ricky's parents get divorced in this season, <laughs> and so like, why is like a camera person like in his house's parents break the news that they're getting divorced? <laughs> why is this happening? Yeah, that's true. It's like. All these devastating things that happen, and this camera person's just like shoving like the zoom effect God, like on Ricky, their face. Fucking cry, fucking cry, Ricky, you fucking bitch. Um, and it's also Bizarre. just like I feel like a bad excuse to just not have good camera work. Yeah. Or editing. The camera work, especially, is really horrible. It's very there's janky, like, isn't it? Yeah, there's like multiple bits where the cameras look like they've been like shot by someone who can't stop shaking like, well, they didn't own a tripod yeah. or whatever it's like they don't use tripods in documentaries because they're always following the people but it's like if they're just standing still you don't need to do that right you don't need to like feel like a guy just took like a, a pill beforehand he was like <laughs> yeah, I think like I still... took a sleeping pill and he was like oh fuck I can't felt like one it. of the worst parts about it was like if they're moving then okay fair enough but there are parts where they're just like standing in the yeah. hallway and the camera's like wobbling be really for no static reason shots with Characters standing still. Yeah, because why aren't you but standing still? The camera's still, really then? like kind of waving around and shaking, and it kind of like Where that's like the cardinal sin for me is like I can abide something that is just bad, but like when you're actually making me feel ill, like yeah, that's uh, I don't know. I was getting quite motion sick. The cameras honestly look like they've been operated by like college students who are literally just learning how to use cameras. Mm-hmm. Like it's really, really amateurish. Maybe it could have been like. The, the like, I don't know AV department in that school were trying to make a documentary, and that would have like explained it a bit because they were just like amateurs who didn't really they were just kind of learning how to make a documentary. Yeah, they don't ha- they don't have but a tripod it. maybe. Yeah, and they never like there's never somebody who comes from like the documentary to be like, hello, I'm some person and I'm filming a documentary about these kids. You never see who these people are, but you mm. know definitely that they are there and there are people behind the cameras because that's the vibe they want to communicate with it being a documentary. Yeah, you kind of... You can't have it both ways, Disney. You can't fucking have it both ways. Yeah, like, why don't we ever meet anyone? It's weird, isn't it? And what's the purpose of it? Do you just want to film the... the It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have a a purpose. (laughs) Yeah, I don't understand. Just like, also that kind of mockumentary like trend in comedy has started to die off. Like, mm-hmm. I think people have kind of gotten sick of it now, so it just makes the show feel really, really dated. Yeah. And this came out in 2019. Yup. This is three years ago. Yeah. That like, came out far after, like, like the mockumentary sort of thing had kind of died off. Mm-hmm. Like, Maybe, the last yeah. big one I can think of is, like, Parks and Rec. Maybe they're trying to bring back a revival. But it, it's not been long enough since the trend died to, like, have, like, a big revival of it. You turn out to the makers of Disney Plus. Hear that. (laughs) Hear that, Mickey. (laughs) Taking it back to, like, Darcy saying, um, comparing it to Glee, and she said that because I kept saying, I feel like this is basically just Glee. Well, no, no, but then, they, uh, yeah, it's true, though, but then they reinforced it in the, um, 
I don't know, like the eighth episode or something, where they're playing that um, board game that uh, Carlos had made in his house that apparently he's never played, but we'll get to that in a minute. And there's a part, what was it? It was like, take me to Glee or something, or find the Glee or some shit. And I think they literally were like, oh yeah, we know that we're trying to be Glee. Yeah. But with this like office kind of mockumentary. Yeah, although it's like Glee is shot completely different. I feel like tonally this show is very similar to that. That show mm-hmm. definitely has a lot more like ridiculous drama and stuff. Um, this one's a lot more subdued compared to Glee, which is like really, really silly and over the top. Yeah, constantly. I feel like Glee was quite dark compared to yeah. this. I, f- I feel like they didn't want to um, overwhelm the teen boppers because they're like, oh, mm-hmm. I just want to make a high school musical. But that show's play. for teens also. Just makes it feel like this is like really sanitized compared to that show. Yeah, but I feel like that's. I feel like that's kind of a Disney thing, though. I don't know whether that's just because they... Um... Probably love everything looking clean and like not offending anyone. Yeah, just, I like, think that might be what it is. Not having any kind of grit in both the visuals and just like the, the topics that they're trying to handle. Like every time they go outside, it's like it's just a set. It's yeah. like they go out into an alley. There's like a scene in one of the episodes where um, Nini and Courtney, they go outside and Courtney's like, you forgot. Why you love to sing in the first place? You didn't do it for boys. Sing with me, Nini. And they sing outside the like this back alley of a of a bowling alley. Yeah, it was and like it all just looks like a set because there's no mm. dirt anywhere. Yeah, and it's just awful. Like I don't, I don't know. Like I complain about that with like a few good men. It's like it all looks too clean, but it's like yeah, yeah. It kind of reminded me of um the show Victorious. Like whenever they go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I like, I used to watch that show when I was a kid. Whenever they went outside, it's just like, here's a set, here's a set that they just were in. It's not actually mm. outside, you know. What do you see when you go outside? You know, just stuff and like influences from the elements and the world and dog shit. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see some shit in this fucking piece of shit show, you know. How- and it's just none of that. It's just, it's very it's very clean. It's very uh, prim and proper. Yeah, and it's like very it's, perfect, isn't it? It, it yeah. matches like all the makeup that everyone's wearing, and then I mean, there needs to be no flaws in this, and just there's nothing to ground it. I just in feel reality. like yeah, it doesn't feel very realistic of teenagers to be like prim and proper and completely tidy. I mean, sure, some pro- some probably are, but to have a whole group of them be like really yeah. sanitized. Where's, where's the fuck ugly one? Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Where's that one fuck ugly kid, huh? The one that gets bullied a lot for uh, liking horses or something. Where are Where you? Where was the horse kid? Where are you? <laughs> Where was the horse girl? <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> New songs? They do them. Un- unrememberable. Un- un- unrememberable. Un- yes. And um, they were all... I, I, yeah, I agree. Can't remember a single one no, of them. No, there was there was one that yeah, the one that you're talking about, the back alley one or whatever. And she's like, I don't need a king, me, me, me. and I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you singing? Every, See, every you don't good even know. song in this yeah, show yeah. is just songs from the original movie. Yeah, that which is it. they <laughs> perform really badly. Yeah, as well. which they butcher. <sighs> yeah, unfortunately. And the, I mean, I don't like. Uh, uh, look, the mixing in these songs, these new songs they do. This kind of um. It's kind of got like a radio vibe about it. Uh, there's a definite, like, it's very noticeable when they go, they transition from like just speaking lines into going into a song. It's like, here's where the song is. And it's like they just kind of pasted a song over the, like, the reel. It's like, fuck, yeah. Just paste yeah, the and then, song in there. So like, when they just paste the, put the audio of the song in there. And then, like, the, the levels go like a lot lower and like all the volume kind of yeah. like, shifts a bit. Um, it's very distracting. Um, it's, it's also, I don't know that yeah. I would usually like complain about something like that in just like if it was just the odd thing, but it happens every time. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if they like didn't even notice then, like, it or. There was a part in I think one of the latter episodes where Miss Jen has a, a dream that she meets Lucas Graybill and they sing a song, and it does transition within that song from them singing. To them speaking and then back into singing again, and there's a very obvious like volume shift there when when they were singing. I was like trying to turn the volume up on the on yeah, my sound and then bar. There was that terrifying bit where and then they uh, speak Luke's and it's just it, yeah. like really loud. And we're like fuck, that, <laughs> like turn it down again, and yeah, then it was, goes back into the singing. It, it was horrible. And it just gets quieter. 
Yeah, and the sound effects keep like overpowering oh, the music. Oh, don't! I was especially <sighs> like in the actual musical where they're performing it in don't the gym. Don't talk about the shoes. And all you can hear is like shoes squeaking and like them tapping things and moving chairs and shit. It That's, was like, all setting me off the so much. I've never hated the idea of having to sit there and listen to shoes squeaking over songs that you can't fucking hear. But then, did they not do that on purpose? Do you think? Because they Maybe. could have just used a pre-recorded song. Yeah, they put could put that over it and been like, "Here, here's the song that they're performing." But they actually it. like it feels like they use the audio from just the set, it, and as a result of that, like the sound design is a bit iffy, and like you can hear squeaking and like stomping on the floor. I feel like maybe it's meant to make sense in the fact that um, it's like low budget high school theatre. You know, you know when they're like um, they don't have like the proper microphones and stuff to like do the audio and I don't know. It was just it was just horrible. It was horrible. But it, I think that comes down to just yeah, it was just horrible. I don't think anyone would have enjoyed it, but especially me. Every time I could hear stomping or shoe squeaking or someone jumping from a table to another one it was just it was like jarring it was like listening yeah. to that rather than the song like i don't i can't tell you what song was playing did you guys like the you new know? acapella version of bop to the top um oh the one that courtney does yeah um oh right i don't mind it i think she's actually a really good singer um but obviously nothing's gonna beat the original so i'm not even gonna it just like seemed like they were trying to do this like overly emotional version of that song even though mm-hmm. that's like not the point of the song. Oh, I, d- I didn't really take it that way. I, I don't just, know what the point yeah. of these songs are. No, I, don't I just. I don't I... think um, the two leads who do Breaking Free really fit with the song either. I don't mm-hmm. think their voices really complement each other in a duet. Because I think Olivia Rodrigo has a voice that's kind of in a lower register and like it kind of clashes with the guy because they're kind of singing in the same register. Yeah, like mm. I couldn't tell who was singing what, if that makes sense. Yeah. Not, not in, not in a way to say that you know, um, one sounds overtly feminine and one sounds like overtly manly or anything. But usually, when when two people are singing, you can usually tell them apart, and I found it quite difficult to do, which is quite weird. Well, you know, in that original movie, you've got, um, or even in those movies, you've got uh, the character of Gabriella and the character of Troy, and it's just like such a night and day contrast with how their voices sound. Like hers is very high pitched, and his is um <clears throat> a bit more baritone. Or yeah, like just... maybe yeah, maybe that's what it is. The voices just didn't. Yeah, the, you know. there's like a blend there, and it works very well. But in this, yeah, I agree, it doesn't really, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't blend. Um, and that song where like she's singing "Bop to the Top" on her own. I mean, that was annoying. It was like, I don't know. It's just like, who cares? Who cares? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I can sing. I'm like a church. My my voice is more for church, though. And then she sings. Everyone's like, whoa, <laughs> you can sing. You, you, you're really good at singing. Apparently like, they only yeah, did that because that. they didn't have time to record like a full band version of Bop to the Top. I'm not surprised. Wow, that is... Because it does, Quite the, the show thing. does feel very, very rushed out the door. Yeah, they, um, oh, no, I'm getting it confused with the special. I thought they said they only had, like, a couple of weeks to do it. But I'm... No, they said they, That's the that film. was the film, yeah, they <laughs> only had, like, three weeks. <laughs> the film was done in three weeks, and it is a masterpiece. And it's so much better than this. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm it's not going to say that movie is, like, amazing or whatever, but I do really like it, and I think they get it pretty pretty spot on with what they're trying to do yeah. to be fair it's also only like an hour 20 whereas this is like five hours worth mm-hmm. of tv uh, okay yeah fair enough if we're gonna compare it to yeah actual length of and there's less show. developed here yeah, yeah. Um, they're just like what, sure. season two guys this could have easily been a movie i think i agree if there's you've, so yeah, much if they could have cut out there's yeah, so much about that's what, just there yeah but then what would they have called it would they just would they just have done the same thing but High as a film? High School Musical, the musical. As a film? Um, yeah, why not? Yeah. High School Musical, the musical, the movie. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. But I mean... Every time they said that in the show, it's like, now back to High School Musical, the musical, the series. I'm like, how do you not know that's so stupid? How do I you think not they know do... that's a terrible title? I swear title? Yeah. they do. Even in that special we watched, it, you could tell that they all think it's a yeah. terrible name. It's like they're basically giggling when they say it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a terrible name. Oh man! 
And I like to purposely make it longer by like throwing just like random words in. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the point where like I started enjoying it, it was like episode five. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like Ricky and Gina who like kind of have this sort of chemistry going on. And like, oh, yeah, yeah. she kisses him on the cheek. And like, I was like, that was all right. That was quite sweet. And they kind of talk about like how she doesn't really have any friends. And like, that was like, all right. It was something to latch on to. And then it never went anywhere. Because Ricky just, like, went for Nini in the end. And then, like, Gina, like, literally leaves. And like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, she gets a what phone call yeah. in one of the later... Like, it's not even... It's, like, two episodes later, and it's like, oh, we have to move again. And what I thought was going to happen was that there was, like, um, when uh, Gina comes back or whatever, I thought there was going to be some more, like, conflict where they were going to be like, oh, I want Ricky too. Like, we, we're going to yeah. have to fight for this man. And all of a sudden, she goes... Oh, see you later. I'm flying back out again. So, what was the point yeah, of coming like, back? Their friends are like, "Oh no, you can stay the night. Don't leave right now." And it's just like, "But wait a second, I have a really great idea." And then that's it. They don't. You don't find out what the idea is. What she just leaves? No, you don't see her leave. That's just it. That's the last time you see those characters in the season. I don't understand that. Like, I assume she's going to come back in the second season. Yeah, it's probably going to turn out that she's moved in with her mates or something. Yeah. Turns out I could have stayed here. For, uh, anyway, yeah. just could have stayed. <laughs> yeah, because you need some sort of other conflict going on for the next season, right? You can't just have them happy together, right? Because EJ's mm -hmm. like, I'm playing to lose. So he's already like, let her go and moved on. So Gina needs to come back and be like, oh, um, I kind of like Ricky, so like, I kind of want to get involved again. And... But then what's so great about Ricky, like... Nothing. Nothing. He's a oh, terrible, so terrible horrible. character. I'm so sorry. He's a really bad, boring <laughs> character, you know. And I just I he think seems that sweet, about like though, a lot of these characters. I just don't care about yeah, them. I they're don't really think like they're all rich as hell, and like they all drive really nice cars. Ricky drives a no. What is it? Oh, an EJ he drives a fucking Jeep. Yeah, he's got a Jeep. He's sixteen. How's he got a Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like so... his. It's his car. I was so lost. I mean. Yeah, I don't want to be horrible about it, they but they all the kind of suck. Well. Don't they were all they? rich as hell and like complained about it then too. Yeah, but that yeah that yeah that is a high school musical thing to a T though. Oh, daddy won't let me take summer out by the summer pool. Yeah. How dare he make yeah. me work but for like a the living? The thing with those movies are uh, the characters are very very like well developed and they're very mm. interesting. They're filled with personality and because of that, they're like super memorable. Like, I can remember, like, everything about all those characters because they, like, have strong personalities. Oh, yeah, I don't Whereas know half don't the names. anyone in this does. I don't know any of their names either. No, I know, don't like, four of them. I don't think any of the them. acting's really that good either. Like, I was saying to Darcy multiple times that I really like Olivia Rodrigo's music, but I don't think she's a good actress at all. Oh, she's terrible. Like, and th this, is a, this isn't a reflection of, like... Because I'm, I can't act and I can't sing and I can't dance, so I'm not going to comment too much. But it's not good. It's not good at all. Like I wanted to be nice because I thought, oh, you know, you know, it might be like their first performances or whatever. But they're not good, and I'm sorry, they're not good. I mean, I don't know. It's like that, and the writing is dull, and like I, 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 I did just mention don't think that they before. They try to develop these characters because no. it's like you're just going to see them in season two, and then like we can do it then. I don't know. I did, kind of, I did kind of bring that up to Chris when I was watching it. I went, I can't tell whether they're bad because of the writing or whether they're bad because they're not good. And I don't, I don't know because... I think it's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Because they seem like nice people, like on the special. They seem quite <laughs> sweet, you know? They seem like nice people. But I'm not sure if this is the show for them, you know? I think they need to go on and do something else. Maybe Coronation Street. They all were in Coronation Street. I'd have a better time. Because <laughs> um, then I wouldn't watch it. And we could have watched something else. Um, it's there's true. There's like a lot of like f trying to force characters together as well. Like characters who they think should be together. Are you talking about it's the like, two ginger um, kids now? Yeah, they do that with the ginger kids. <laughs> yeah. They do that with the gay kids. And um, like EJ going after Nini. Or like, they're just all of them. I don't think they have chemistry and they don't feel like friends really they don't fit they're just like we're in the 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 play we're in the play together we're all friends right it's like no that's not enough it's not enough they actually developed that in the movie 
where like, you feel like these people knew each other beforehand and how they would continue to know each other afterwards. And you, you develop these dynamics in such a way to make them believable. But I didn't believe any of this. Yeah, it didn't feel so very I, natural. I complained about like the, the character of Ricky and the character of Big Red, who is his, um, his friend. And, he, and they are friends. And that's all you need to know. And it's just like they put them in a room. And it's like, you just have to believe that like they've been friends forever. Because I didn't. <laughs> like, it's, there's no like suspension of disbelief going on here because they just. I don't know. I just feel like they couldn't be bothered. Yeah, there's no chemistry between any of the characters either. No, and it's it's one of those weird things where like um you know at the I think you only find out in like the eighth or ninth episode or something that Ricky and um Nina because that's her real name have known each other since they were like four years old or something. But I don't feel like. They, I feel like they've only known each other since, like, the beginning of the show, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I just don't feel like... I don't believe that they've been friends, like, their whole life and then, like, blossomed into this romantic connection. Like, I don't feel it. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel them. And they dated in real life, and I don't feel them. Did you feel them? Because I don't feel them. Troy and Gabriella met I at felt the beginning them. of that movie, <laughs> at that first movie. They, that's when they met. And they have more chemistry, and, like, they know each other more so than these two leading characters in this show that have supposedly known each other their entire lives. Yeah, I don't feel that. And it was even more surprising when he was like, oh yeah, remember when I was younger and I used to call you Nini because I couldn't say I couldn't vowels. pronounce my A's, I couldn't do it, just Nini. <laughs> was anyone else like totally surprised by the fact that they were meant to have known each other their whole life? Because I was. Yeah, I was confused as what was going on at that point. I was like, what the fuck is, like, what are they talking about? Yeah, he's, he's literally just talking about how they've known each other since he was like four. Uh, okay. Just move on, bro. Stop being a simp. There are other <laughs> fish in the sea, my man. Like, it doesn't matter that much. He's dating another fish in the sea. Yeah, you, you go after Gina. She was all right. That was that was a bit more believable though because they only knew each other for about I think they were like what it was like three weeks or something. I could believe that or like two months, something like that. I could oh, believe they were just that like though. Kind of getting on. <laughs> yeah, no, but I could believe that they were getting on in a natural pace, and I feel like it's because it's more organic, I suppose. But yeah, I didn't really. But why feel do you need anything? to have like everyone hook up? Oh, oh yeah, two no, kids the... like EJ's cousin whose name I've forgotten. Ashling. She plays Ashling. Or like, How do I know all this? Yeah, Ashlyn <laughs> yeah, and um, Big Red. They're like, there's like a little bit, like in one of the latter episodes, or like episode eight or something. I don't know when they're like, Is they look at each game, other, Serbia? and I, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> like, I knew it immediately. I'm like, they, they're gonna get together, aren't they? And then they did, and it's like, why can't these people just be friends with each other? Like, why do you, what, why do they like each other? Yeah, it's such an incestual kind of. Um like thing that they do in these like shows where they make everybody in a group like get together for like no reason yeah. but no they were like oh um but you know he just gets me she just gets me but gets you on what like uh, what is the level that you guys get each other on that you both ginger i'm confused i don't understand i don't like when <laughs> shows or like movies go like here's a bunch of friends and like over the course of however long they all kind of hook up or whatever and it's like you have been in a group of friends like since you were like a child, that's disgusting to like think about. I it's, feel. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit it's weird, weird, isn't it? Like, like they're just like your brothers and sisters, really. Surely, it feels weird. Yeah, I do, yeah, I don't understand the yeah because the context behind like this group of friends, obviously, like you know, uh, Ricky and Nina have known each other, blah blah blah. But then, what about the others? Have they all known each other long, or is it just like they've been no, together they for so of, like intensely in this like theatre? That... Like, uh, like, it's a... like they met this year yeah they'd already been at school together for a while but now they're like we're part of the family the uh, the (laughs) family of drama guys so uh, we're in the play together and now we're all mates so they like go to big red's house and they're like i guess we're mates now and we'll they will hang out in his basement (laughs) like what yeah i i I just don't understand i just don't get it i don't know you have to have the two ginger kids hook up (laughs) I just, you have to have that in there. And you have like a post-credit scene where he's on the dance floor he's and he's tapping away. <laughs> he's, he's he's doing his tap dance and she's like, "Zig, I love your cooking. Make me another." Wait, no, that was that was the movie. I feel like they wanted to like replicate that. Oh in some my kind of god, way. that would have like, been so much you better. Tap dance. That's pretty hot. It was kind of like a. Oh yeah, because she bakes, don't she? So like, 
he could have. Did he bake in this show? I don't even know anymore. No, Zeke baked. Zeke, Zeke baked. <laughs> There's one side character from this movie that like, you don't get anything from apart from the fact that he bakes creme brulee, and I fucking remember him like <laughs> so much better than all these other terrible, terrible characters. See, no, no, we laugh, but it's true. Like I was talking about that creme brulee thing every single time they were talking about like baking or something, but they never ever like bring it up. And then they bring up, what's her name? Martha Cox, the lady who likes to pop, jive, move, and whatever. The pop I think she was in the... this as well. She was, was, like she, on the, was she that teacher? She was on the judging um... panel. And they were in the, um, in, the, in the cafeteria. And they were like, Miss Jen, this is a tragedy. This is a horrible thing that you've done. You've lied to us all. And then they do like a flash mob <laughs> where they're like, Miss Jen is cool, actually. And then they win everyone over with the flash mob that they do in the cafeteria. And then like, the girl from like who said that she likes to pop and lock and jam and break and and she was in there she was in, she was like there on the judging panel I was like wait what <laughs> she then, was in it why what yeah she just I don't get it I don't understand what yeah, the fuck's happening and here just you, you can't you, you didn't know that Miss Jen was not in this movie but so you this this woman here was actually in the movie and she was it, she was sitting right next to you. Yeah, why was she not the director of this movie? It doesn't make any sense. And then she just gets up and goes, how do I blag tickets to opening night? And everyone's like, woo! <laughs> it's like, there was like so much of, um, you know, like r slash that happened. It was just like, people were like clapping and cheering after this like flash. <laughs> we skimmed over it earlier. <laughs> Lucas Grabiel has a cameo in this. He shows mm. up for a dream sequence. <laughs> He's not like, actually in it, but like he shows up in Miss Jen's dream sequence. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he kind of had nothing else on. Probably not. No. It was fan service to me, though, because I got yeah. really excited, even though you knew it was coming. Right. Because obviously she does that bit where she's like, you know, um, in this part where I got my part cut, uh, Lucas came up to me afterwards and was like, that was a good line, Jessica. My name's not Jessica, but you know, <laughs> like what? So you knew it was going to happen. You knew he was going to come, like, not, maybe not into the show, but I felt like something was going to happen and he was going to be like, I don't know, like, even like a paper cut or something, because that show kind of does that kind of thing. Just like, oh, you can do it, Miss Jen Jennifer. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> just a fine little thing, I guess. They oh, sing I, a song. I liked it. Not that I remember it. It was something they sing like, a song. <laughs> the people got to play their parts. Do, 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 do. I played Ryan. Remember me? I played yeah. Ryan. I played Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, you did as well. <laughs> Just in case you Gen Zs didn't know he played Ryan. You didn't I'm... recognize him. He played Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I never like when people like pick up musical ability like really fast as well. It's like they had like nothing to them and then like they just like learn was it Ashlyn was like, Here I wrote this song, Nini. Sing it with me, will you? And like she's never heard this song before, but she just sings it immediately. Yeah. Like, now I know it. <laughs> That's not how what? music works, you know. <laughs> how do you do that? And then like the same with like just like Big Red at the end was like, I don't know how to use this A V equipment. Miss Jen's like Go on there, and you, you you go on there, and you do it, and you you're responsible for the lighting now. It's it's all up to you, Big Red, uh, Larry Saperstein, and he's like, okay, I guess I'll do it. Did you just make up that name? No, that's his name, and like full that's the actor's name. Like full disclosure, I have never done this before. I do not know how to use the AV equipment. It's completely new to me. And then they get mad at him when he fucks up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand why they were... respect? Was... Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, and then he was the just other teacher's go over... like, oh, here's a button. Just press this button. And then he goes away for a bit. And then Larry Saperstein is, uh, he's, he's mastered the he's AV... He's AV whiz. He's mastered it. It's like, oh, I can do it all now. It just came so naturally to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this huge board, this huge PA board with like a million buttons on it. And he just knows how to use it now. It's annoying. Yeah. I feel like that's a classic trope that you got to do I in these shows. I don't want to have though. these characters learn things or like have some sort of journey through like learning something. They just want them to know it mm. immediately. And that's why like the show kind of feels very fast, very fast paced. Like, like they kind of can't wait for it to be over at the end. I guess that's the only thing I liked about um, what happens with Ricky is that he does kind of go on this like, it's a bit of a shitty arc, but he does kind of go through this whole like, He's terrible at acting because he's never done it. He doesn't really like to do it. 
and then he kind of he goes through the arc that he's yeah. a simp the entire time because oh, yeah. Nini broke up with him, and in the end, he is he has an arc, and he's like, I have mm. a realization. I still love Nini, Nini as I always did. And now we're going to get back together. Yeah, his arc was a uh, whole 360. Yeah. But um, no, but I mean, uh, in at least in that respect, he kind of at least was like learning stuff. Whereas I just felt like everyone else was just kind of like, oh, yeah, um, I could already sing. I could already do mm. this. Oh, yeah. I invited that lady from the uh, posh school that you wanted to go to. Yeah, because like I know you so well that I know that you'll be fine with yeah. that. How do you? How do you do all these things? They're just kids. All these kids, it. like in a school play. You ever been in a school play? Yeah, it's shit. It is shit. Yeah. And like, yeah, they kind of were terrible, and that was like kind of part of the joke, I suppose. But it's also like, well, how did Ricky, who just like came here and was like, I guess I'll try my hand at um this play, and like he's doing get your head in the game at the end of it. His breath control is apparently like. Beyonce levels, yeah. Because <laughs> like you could just like do all this mad choreography and sing on pitch and just like really very well. And he doesn't have to take a and breath time, at any point. No, yeah, it's, it's fine. I, how, is, how does he do that? Yeah, and all the costumes are just like almost too good to be a school production of a high school musical movie. Which I mean, I don't know the budget for High School Musical, so I don't know if it was like that expensive. But I mean. Come on, you're a tiny high school. What? Oh no, they could have had the costumes left over. I suppose I don't know. I'm just trying to pull out things out my ass to make it make no, sense. No, they said that they made all the props and costumes. They almost so look they too good. They look too good to be student made. Student made. Yeah. Uh, not to be rude, because you know students are talented. But I mean, I mean they are be all rich. So. Mm -hmm. They probably just got them sent off somewhere to be made. <laughs> That's what I can imagine would happen. Pay some poor Filipino kid to make them. Like, look what I made. <laughs> they did look good though. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean the choreography is—it's all right. You know, the show is not. It's that's the thing. Like I hate like it's almost like a show you can't really complain about too much because it just like is what it is. Like yeah, you, you go into it and it's like you expect. Yeah, what that. did you expect? Like yeah. you, of course it's not going to be very yeah. good. We're also not the audience for it. No, no, it's I like have a, a Fortnite joke in it. Yeah, I'll, wait, what Fortnite joke? Like Larry Saperstein's like, you want to play Fortnite, bro? Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. No, I don't want to play Fortnite. I just want to watch YouTube. Let's just watch a guy uh, eating his body weight in, I don't know, yoga or something on YouTube. That's oh, what Nick I Ocado want. Avocado. I don't know. But yeah. Don't <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about my parents' divorce. Just let's watch some weird shit on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Did he I... ever kind of get over that? Is that like, that should have been his arc? Was like accepting... Oh, what, that his, his mum's in a new relationship? Yeah. On, but, but it's like, fine that his dad moved on. Hey, dad, you should get with Je my teacher, Miss Jen. That was the... That was... The, why? Why be like, oh, yeah, I think you should call up Miss Jen and go on a date with her. Mum, how dare you have a new boyfriend? It's just so rude and disrespectful. Todd, the fuck is Todd, mum? What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't understand that. And, like, I goes up understand his dad and he's like, um, so, uh, Miss Jen, um, you gonna tap that, bro? <laughs> What a guy! <laughs> I don't know anymore. I, do I, I like... looked up the um the the ages of these char uh, these people as well. Oh, like, no. In 2019, Olivia Rodrigo was 16. Yep. And Matt Cornett, uh, who Which, played like that EJ? EJ, he was 20. And like they start the show and they're so like how, these how two old is, is together. How old is Ricky in this? I think he's also 20. Fucking oh, normal. Because they had a relationship in real life. Yeah, no, that's what I was, I was saw, just wondering. I looked up their ages. I was like, oof, that's it, a bit. Weird. That's fucking gross. I make no exceptions for anybody. If I think that your age gap relationship is gross, I'm I'm gonna flat right out say it. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Bassett. Yes. Played Ricky. That's the name. Uh, he's 21 now. Oh, okay. So oh, you know, so he must have been. No, he must. They have are been pretty bit... close in age. Yeah. No, um, that's like that's that's okay yeah. then, I suppose, because. Well. Two year gap. I mean, like, I didn't mm. really have much of a problem with that, but it's like, I don't know. I guess it was, like, fine. Yeah. As long as you're not really, like, sexualizing it. But, like, sometimes I kind of were. There was, like, a scene where, like, uh, Nini says to EJ, she's like, oh, I wish I had what you had inside you. Confidence, morals, and a dozen abs. It's like, why are you... What? Sounds like you're supposed to be a kid. You're supposed to be, like, a 16-year-old. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's really weird. 
I don't know though. I think um, I guess it's that kind of age where people kind of do start talking about that kind of stuff and. Well, then go full Thanks, throttle and have uh, a fucking sex scene in it. I don't know. Yeah, they, yeah, they probably could have just gone gone ahead with that if they were gonna do it. I think because it is a little bit uh, timid and a uh, prude, isn't it? Where they're all like, "Oh no, if I kiss him, <laughs> better go away now." But it's like, let's be honest, a lot of sixteen-year-olds at that age, you know what I mean, are um kind of starting their first uh, experiences and stuff. So just yeah, yeah, just roll like with it, the man. The stars of something new, and um, just do it. Just they're get they're on out with it. there, they're being teenagers and figuring it out. Yeah, let them do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to see it, but let's just l- let them be. You know, uh, I don't know. I just felt like it. J- I just didn't feel very realistic to me in any aspect. But then, is it meant to be? Probably not. I don't know. There's <laughs> like a point <laughs> in the fifth episode that kind of hit a bit too close <clears throat> to home. Sorry, I'm like dehydrated now. But on this rages, but like Carlos goes, this is this is the moment when the creative team begins to give the show over to the cast, which is strangely emotional. But Miss Jen says, "That's a life in the arts, or well, that an almost constant unemployment." <laughs> like, Fuck. Oh, when when that happened, I, I did the I put my finger up in the air and I went, "Yep, yep, 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 yep." It's yeah. don't say that to me. <laughs> But then, um, in that movie yesterday, Nick Cage also said that he went, "I don't recommend a life in the arts because you're unappreciated." <laughs> but he said it in a much more like dramatic and mm. fun way. It's always like a bit of a piss take when like you watch something that's made through art, and they're like, "Don't get into art, kids." Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Try to cut out a competition. Yeah, can't have these new newcomers in. Can't have the TikTok generation coming in and stealing our roles. Yeah, that's true. These roles need to be populated by hard-working paedophiles. <laughs> what? Ratings? <laughs> yeah, Ratings. sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm lost now. <laughs> On that note, do it out of... um, We're, we're, we're all in this together. Because they are all in it together. Quite literally. Right. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. I was not really into this show. Well, no, I'll do it out um, of apples. Sorry. Okay. That makes more sense. Um, like I already said, I don't think we're the target audience for this show, but at the same time, I don't really know who the audience is. I feel like a lot of younger people probably aren't going to like it because they don't know High School Musical. And like the people who are old enough to know the High School Musical trilogy aren't going to like it because they're too old now. It's not for them. Um, I could be wrong, though. I think the show's doing kind of well. People seem to like it, so... Who knows, but yeah, just not for me. I guess I'd give it like four apples out of ten. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I don't know who it's for. I guess it's for the cast. There's people who just really like it. Mm. And it's got some pretty decent reviews. It's got uh, generally quite positive, I think, uh, other reviews. Except for this one. Um, <laughs> oh, no. This one did not go very well. Um, it was It was a gr- I mean, it's almost like you expect it to be a slog, but it's kind of just it goes really quickly as if it just can't wait to be over. And then uh, I just I couldn't be bothered with it, really. But then like in that last half, I guess I was having a bit more fun when we were watching it together. I don't watch this alone because it's just unless this is your type of thing. I wanted like more songs or like more like entertaining uh, music, but it didn't really do that. Um, mm. It did at least make me. Uh, listen to all the songs that I liked from those original movies. I did that one night. Um, but as regards like the the new ones, I don't remember any of them. I'm not going to watch season two. Can't be bothered. I would rather put my energy into something that's actually all right or decent. This is not that. I'll give it four four apples out of ten. Ooh. Um. Damn. Every, like, the whole time that you guys were just talking, I just I just kept thinking, I just found it really like inoffensive and just kind of exactly what I thought it was gonna kind of be like. I didn't really. Yeah. It never uh, defies expectations. Yeah, like this is what I mean. Like I, I, it's almost um, it just felt kind of average to me. Like I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't like loathe it. Like I didn't think it was like the worst thing to get through. But I'm definitely not gonna carry on watching it. If that's um, just watch the movie. Yeah, yeah, like if you really want to get the experience, yeah, just watch the film instead of watching this. But um, because the, it goes on to do Beauty and the Beast anyway, so you may as well just watch Beauty and the Beast after you watch this. So it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, two, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah apparently um, in season two they do Beauty and the Beast as the spring musical. Um, Great. 
So I why? Guess- yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was um, High School Musical the musical the series because they were doing High School Musical. What are they going to call it next? High School Musical the Beauty and the Beast the series? No idea. Beauty and the Beast the musical the series? No, because it's still High School Musical. But yeah, I, f- I feel most, I feel mostly neutral about it. Um, I'll just give it five apples out of ten. But yeah, no, I agree. That Beauty and the Beast thing doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No. They should have just called it Disney the Musical the yeah. Season or something. Disney the Musical the Season, yeah. <laughs> Disney the, the the Disney the Disney. You go like you can just make a show called the Disney Show, and like it'd do numbers because it's Disney. Yeah, yeah. Of course. What's it about? Disney. <laughs> Disney. It doesn't matter yeah. what it's about. Well, they for decades in the like in America they had. The Disney World show, I think, where a lot of it was <laughs> literally just like old animated Disney clips and like clips of just Walt Disney talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of clips of Walt Disney being a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and yet, no, no one cancelled him, so here we are. <laughs> Well, he died. The ultimate cancellation. <laughs> the ultimate cancellation. <laughs> Life cancelled him. Don't. We're going to get our podcast banned. From what? Everything, because Disney own everything, okay? So, stop it. So, that's the end of the that one. <laughs> okay. I'm so exhausted I'm talking about this fucking show. Yeah, um, what? Why did it go on for so long? This is my biggest grievance. When we talk about these shit shows, we just go on about them for forever. Next episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the next Disney catalog. What's what's on the docket for the next Disney uh, uh, movies? <laughs> Beauty it, and the Beast, perhaps. If it is anything Disney related, I am going to veto it. Well, that's rude. We've had too much Disney recently. We're going to spin a wheel, and it's going to tell us what we're going to watch next episode. Okay. In episode seventy-six. I love that. Do you see the way he just put it towards his glasses like he couldn't read? No, I'm trying put to put it towards it the, microphone. the microphone so, he, oh, so well, the was... audience can hear the clicks. Um, the X-Men trilogy has come up. Any gripes against that? I'm fine with that. I want to see Cyclops again, so I'm cool. I'm sure, why not? Join us next time to see Cyclops. <laughs> That's coming. It's on its way. He has one eye. And it shoots beams from it. And it's sick. And it's fucking cool as hell. And also he's in Sonic the Hedgehog. So, if you want to hear us talk about Sonic the Hedgehog, the Cyclops, the movie, (laughs) join us that one. Join join us then, and that one is going to come. We got social media. (laughs) I feel like (laughs) you've blown Darcy's mind. (laughs) Was he actually in Sonic the Hedgehog? The actor is. Oh, no, that's not the same. Well, you thought Cyclops, the X-Men character, was in Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, anything's possible these days. He was in Space Jam. Fuck it. Social media. <laughs> Whatever. Join us next time. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. <sighs> uh, whatever. I'm a gnome. And you've been...